Leah wrote to me and asked, Hi Jen, I'm making my own creation of steampunk jewelry, but I'm unsure if I should use ice resin or E6000. My wish is to glue or attach some small gears to a scissor pendant, and I was wondering if it's best to use resin or E6000. It's difficult for me to answer this question without seeing the project, without seeing the pendant itself, without seeing the gears you're going to use, because there's clock gears, which can be two inches across, or there's pocket watch gears that can be half an inch. There's wrist watch gears that could be, you know, five millimeters across. So it's kind of hard to say what you should do without knowing how you want to put them together and what it is you're putting together. I'll try my best to help, and hopefully my answer will help you and help other people out there who might be interested in using ice resin or E6000. E6000 is really thick. It is difficult to put in small places and it doesn't always dry clear. If the pendant is large and you're using large gears with a large surface area, say perhaps solid gears where there's a surface you can apply the E6000 to, then I would use E6000. If they are small gears, smaller than a quarter inch and you're putting them on a very small pendant, I would use ice resin, as I've done in my scarab, steampunk scarab earrings. I put the tiny gears on the back of the brass bug and then used a, a small paintbrush to paint a layer of ice resin over it. But ice resin can be very tricky. It is thick and it will sometimes, you know, like on these earrings, it will it will sit where you put it and not run off the sides. However, I have had instances where it will run off of things and it is sticky, hard to clean. It takes a full 48 hours to set. I have a lot of experience using it. I know what its limitations are. It's not really a glue. You can't just paint it on the back of a gear and then stick the gear on something and think that, that that's it. Um, it. It really is kind of a process and it helps to have experience with that process. I don't want anyone out there who might be using ice resin or any resin to mess up their important project because once you put it on something and it's hardened or sometimes it doesn't harden if you don't do it right, there's no coming back from that. You've just, you've lost your gears, you've lost your pendant, whatever. So before you use any resin, I would recommend using it on something that's not important. Get some experience with it, practice with it before you use it on your important project. Another thing you might consider is using wire or tiny rivets to put things together instead of, or in addition to glue or resin which is something I do with many of my pieces. I use a combination of wire, rivets, glue, and or resin to make things really secure when I'm putting them together. I learned my wire and riveting techniques through a combination of trial and error and taking classes in those things. I don't use welding. I don't, I don't solder things together or weld things together. It's just, it's not feasible for me. I have children. I have pets. I would probably burn myself. I, I have tried doing a little bit of, of torch work before. It's just not my thing. I don't have a setup for it in my house. I don't feel comfortable with it. So that's why I use a combination of what's called cold joining techniques, which would be the wire, rivets, glue, and resin. I hope this is helpful, and if anyone out there has a question for me or would like me to elaborate on the topics in this video, you can leave me a note on YouTube or you can email me at jlhjewelry, all one word, spelled in the American spelling, j-e-w-e-l-r-y, at gmail.com. Thanks a lot. Bye.